Hello everyone and welcome to the session in which we will compute the price or the value of a bond. To calculate the price or to find the value of the bond, we need to apply the concept of the time value of money. What does that mean? It means you need to be familiar with the present value of a single amount, the present value of an annuity. Think of this process as a practical application of the time value of money principles that we learned in the prior session. The good thing about bonds consists of two components, a principal amount and a series of payment. So to determine the price of the bond, we need to discount a single amount and we need to discount an annuity. In other words, find the present value of a single amount, find the present value of an annuity. By summing those two components, we'll find the value of the bond or the price of the bond. This process makes the bond an excellent example of how the time value of money is applied in real world financial decisions. Now keep in mind, we're only using bonds as an example. You could use this concept to value the future value of stocks, find the value of the stock, to find the present value of a rental business, to find the present value of a lease. So it does not matter what you are finding the value for. In this example, we're using bonds. You can find the value of any future payment of money, whether it's a single amount, whether it's an annuity, or if it's not a single amount, if it's not an annuity, it varies from year to year or from period to period. The concept is the same. So it's very important to understand the big picture, but also important to know how to find the price of the bond. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. A bond typically consists of two main components, which are the periodic payments, the periodic interest payment, and the face value or the principal amount. Let me show you on a picture because we're going to be using this picture as we are going through this example. So this is a bond. This is what a bond would look like. So when you buy a bond, when, when an investor buys a bond, they're buying two things. They're buying the face value of the bond. What does it mean when you buy? It means when you lend money to the company, a bond is a form of borrowing. You give the company money, they'll give you this piece of paper, a bond. This piece of paper will promise you two things. They promise to pay back the original amount, the face value, it's called the face value of the bond, and they will pay this amount only once, one time. And depending on the life of the bond, for example, this bond, it's gonna last for five years. Since you lend them the money, they will be paying you interest. So the bond consists of two things. So think of these two things. This is one, the bond face value, and two, those coupon payments. And let me show you the coupon payments. This bond is paying 5%. So every year, if you hold this bond, you can go back to the company, unclip this coupon, and ask them to pay you $5,000, 1,000 times 5%. Now you might be saying, but bonds pay interest semi-annually. We'll talk about that shortly. We'll talk about that We'll talk about that shortly, but for now, we're, we're going to assume one payment per year, which is $5,000, just to keep it simple. So for this example, what, we're, what we'll do is we'll assume the face value is 1000 five-year term, and the coupon rate is 5% paid annually. Once again, paid annually means you only get the money once a year. Now, we're going to introduce the concept of a market rate. Now, the market rate is totally different. The market rate 
is how much you will discount. It's the interest rate that you will use as an investor to discount. They're telling you it's the discount rate. Now, why the market rate is 6% more than the coupon rate? You don't have to worry about this now. In the bonds chapter, I explain this in depth. But what we are saying is this. The investors wants to earn more than what the company is offering because the company is offering five the investors wants to earn six why because maybe the interest rate is higher and the company is not paying this much so the market rate six percent is critical and this would reflect the return then the investors expect based on market condition now before we compute this you have to understand since the bond coupon rate since the bond coupon rate is five percent lower than the market rate the market rate is six percent this bond when we compute the price of the bond it's going to be sold at a discount what does a discount means it means the company that's selling this bond they will not get 100,000 why because they are not competitive enough and you're going to see in the computation when we get to the final answer it will be less than 100,000 so so our am I what am I saying I am saying if if the opposite was true if the coupon rate was 8%, the bond would sell at a premium. Once again, you don't have to worry about the concept now because all what I'm focusing on in this session is the application of the time value. Now we're going to compute the price of the bond. So let's see step one. Step one. Step one, we compute the present value of this interest payment. Remember the bond is consists of the bond consists of two parts. First part the principal and the annuity. First, you, you could either start with the face value or the annuity. We're going to start to discount the annuity. So the bond pays interest annually. And how much they pay interest annually? I just showed you it's the face value times the interest rate, which is $5,000. How many periods is this bond is for? This bond is for five years. So on, on a timeline, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a bond and this bond is paying one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and each payment is 5,000, 5K, 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 and 5K. Now, the investor wants to know how much these interests are worth. What do they use? They use the market rate. They would use the market rate. And how much is the market rate? The market rate is 6%. So they will, they will discount the, those payments at 6%. So let's go ahead and look at the computation using the present value annuity table. We're going to go to the table, but before I'm going to show you the answer, the answer is 4.2124. Remember, this is an annuity. So let's look at the annuity table. So if we go to the annuity table and we said this bond is, this is an annuity table, the N equal to five period equal to five period. And the interest rate is the, the, the uh, investors want to earn 6%. Therefore, the factor, the present value annuity factor is 4.212. And that's why I kept emphasizing, you need to know how to compute the present value of an annuity and the present value of a single amount for this. So let's see what will be the computation then. So if we take the $5,000 we take the $5,000 multiplied by the factor. What we're saying is this, those five payments are worth $21,062. So notice those five payments, if you look at them from a dollar perspective, they're 25,000, five payments times five, but the investor will pay only 21,062, but they will get 25,000 over five years. So this is one component of the bond. This is this component. So we already computed this component and the answer is 21,062. What's next? We need to find the value of this 100,000. How many times are we going to get this 100,000? Only once. The face value, you get it once. So at the end of five years, the investor would receive 100,000. But the question is, how much do we pay for this 100,000 now? Well, the face value is 100. The number of periods is five periods and the market rate also 6%. You always use the 6%. Now, which table do we use now? We're going to use the present value of a single table. The present value of a single table, n equal to 5, i equal to 6. And the factor is 0 0.7473. Let me show you the table so you see where that number is coming from. Again, we're looking at, this is a different table from the previous table. This is the present value of a single amount. Again, the period is 5. It's the same period and the same interest rate, but different table. And the factor is 
747. So let's take a look at the computation. We'll take the 100,000 times 0.7473. So the investor will pay for this part of the bond only $74,730. And if they pay this much, they will get the $1,000. Now we're going to combine the two pieces together. So let's take a look at combining the two pieces together. Remember the bond has a the, these payments, remember $21,062 is for this amount of the bond. Now, in the real world, you don't detach them. They're together, but we have to do the computation separately. And the $74,730 for this part of the bond together, they will pay only $95,792. And when we started, remember what I said is this bond will sell at a discount. It means the company will not get the $100,000. And the reason is because they are paying an interest rate 5% less than they're paying five percent less than the ongoing market now let's take a look at a bond that pay semi-annual interest rate which is more like the real bond so this is what a real bond would look like the real bond if it has a face value of a of hundred thousand remember the coupon payment for a real bond is semi-annually therefore what we're changing in this example is n the number of periods since it's semi-annually, now N equal to 10. It's five-year bond, but this bond pays interest every six months, and it pays 2,500. So let's take a look at now the semi-annual payment. So if the bond pays interest semi-annually, several adjustments are required. The interest rate is halved. So rather than using 6%, when we go to the table, we're going to be using 3%. And the interest payment itself is... Rather than 5,000, it's 2,500. And the number of periods is doubled. I told you n equal to 10. n equal to 10, 5 times 2 equal to 10. The market rate is halved, which is 6 divided by 2, 3%. So when we go to the tables, we're going to use n equal to 10, i equal to 3. Now, using the factors now, we're going to do the computation, the present value of the interest payment. We're going to take the interest payment first. Remember, each payment is how much now? 2,500 and the factor is 8.5302. I'm not going to show you the table, but you could use the annuity table and equal to 10, I equal to 3. And we're going to take 2,500, the payment times 8.5302. So now what we're saying is this part of the bond, the coupon payments alone are worth $21,325.50. So this part of the bond is worth this much. Are we done yet? No. We have to find the present value of the face value. Let's look at the computation for this. The present, again, we'll use the same uh, factors, n equal to 10, i equal to 3, but we'll use a different table, the single payment table, and the factor is 0 0.7441. So 100,000 times 0 0.7441. This part of the bond is worth, this part of the bond is worth 74,410. What do we do next? We look at the combination of these two to find the total price of the bond. And the new price of the bond will be 95,735.50, which is the present value of the coupon payment and the present value of the face value. That's the beauty of the bond. It has two components. It has a, a single payment component and a series of payment component. Now, all what we did in this session, I showed you one application of the time value of money for bonds. If you're an accounting student, you're going to have a whole chapter about bonds. If you're a finance student, you're going to have a whole chapter about bonds as well. Regardless, the computation does not change. All what's going to happen is down the road, we're going to dive much deeper into bonds. We have different types of bonds. There are various characteristics of bonds. All what I did here is show you how to use the time value in computing the price of a bond. Now, this concept, although you, if you understand it, it's very powerful because you can value any investment, whether it's a bond, stocks, all what you're doing is you're discounting cash flows. And this is how you find the value of an investment. And this is the power of the time value of money, something that you have to learn and understand very well, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, CMA exam candidate, accounting or finance. Invest in yourself, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional multiple choice, true false lectures, exercises that's going to help you succeed. Once again, invest in yourself and good luck.